What's going on guys? Terribly Tactical with another firearm review here today and I'm super stoked per usual for this one. Uh, this is actually a really really nice one and per the title uh, we're talking about the Dan Wesson Vigil Commander. If you guys have any idea about Dan Wesson they make very very nice higher end 1911s. They also make really nice revolvers. They also are now making some really cool 2011s. I uh, don't know if I'd go out and sell my STI to get one. Uh, that being said, who knows? But today, specifically, again, we're talking about an old slab side. The good old 1911, 45, because they don't make a 46. They all fall to the hardball, two world wars, still in service, all that great stuff. And uh, here it is, guys. Here is the box that it comes with. It's actually a very nice, um, you know, plastic case, plastic box. Dan Wesson firearms, there's that, nice little tabs and stuff, and uh, let's open her up, look at that, look at that nice blue inside, okay, look at that beautiful blue inside, with that beautifulness inside of that, so you get the box, right, okay, so you get the gun, the gun is wrapped up in this paper, the wax paper, kind of like Smith & Wesson does, you get two magazines, underneath the gun you get a bushing wrench and I thought they used to give you a bottle of oil or something in my other Dan Wesson they they did give me a bottle of oil uh, you get your lock ATF paperwork manual you get a nice little sticker different stuff like that it's not like the CZ's oh we get a couple stickers cool key uh, it's not like the CZ's where you get like um, like a test target or anything that's like showing the accuracy of the the specific gun itself um, but you know it, it, it is what it is it would be something that would be pretty cool um, CZ does because you'll notice it says CZ CZ USA right here on this box I really do like this box it's padded it's like shock resistant uh, specifically cut out for the gun but that's regardless and besides the point uh, CZ does deal with Dan Wesson's distribution, right? And uh, they, they, I don't know if they own them or exactly how it works out, but Dan Wesson themselves is not CZ. They are affiliated. They're not, this is not a CZ firearm. It's a Dan Wesson. It's a separate thing. Like I said, CZ just deals with their distribution and some of their marketing and stuff like that. So here is a look of the gun real quick. Get one of these nice seven round mags, put it in there, and uh, we will get the box out of the way so we can look at what's really important here. Really, really important. The good stuff, if you will. If you will indeed. So here she is. Look at that butte. Look at that absolute butte. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, it is a commander. Traditionally, if you guys have followed my videos, my channel for a long time, you guys know that I am in favor of a full size being a 5 inch barrel government style 1911, or at least government sized. Um, all steel, you know, just, just big honking 45, and, and, and that's that. And that is my preferred way of having a 1911. If you're going to have one 1911, I believe it should be a full size all steel in 45 ACP. However, because I have more than one, you know, I, I'm, al I'm allowed to branch outside of that. And uh, this is, is no exception to that. And that is the Dan Wesson Vigil Commander. Okay. Not only is it a commander, which means it's a 4.25 inch, four and a quarter inch barrel it's also a lightweight so the frame is aluminum so that's actually pretty nice because it's a little bit lighter weight it's a little bit smaller it still maintains the full-size government profile grip so you get full capacity full grip all that stuff you just you're a little quicker out of the holster with the shorter barrel um, it's a little bit lighter and uh, you know it's a little bit easier to carry and different pros and cons especially with the lightweight frame it's definitely lighter than an all-steel frame so the lightweight frame is made out of forged aluminum. This gun does come with Dan Wesson's famous duty finish. And uh, that's awesome because their duty finish is 
It's funny because I keep saying duty, and I'm trying not to laugh as immature as that is. Um, but their duty finish is impeccable. It looks really, really good on the gun. And it's very, very, very wear resistant. Okay, extremely wear resistant. Uh, in and out of a holster, in and out of a bag, in a, you know, whatever you're doing with it, handling it, shooting it, cleaning it, you know, just over the years, it holds up very, very well. Very, very well. Uh, this gun and all the Vigil uh, series, they do have a full size. This is the Commander, and then they have like a CCO, which is the Officer Frame Grip with the Commander Slide. That's another great carry option. They do feature Shadow Coca-Bola Grips, so that's, that's kind of classy. It's kind of cool. Um, I really do like how they do the grips because they, they look absolutely amazing. They look gorgeous. You got the nice Dan Wesson logo there. And then as well, where your hands, your fingers um, will actually be gripping the gun, they're textured. So they're kind of like stippled, you know, when it comes to wood. And not only does that look good, it feels good, and it does provide some extra traction on the gun. Uh, really, really like that. So, a couple of the other little specs, get them out the way, and then we will talk about my opinion on this gun, my experience with this gun, and all that good stuff. Uh, overall length, we're looking at 7.9 inches. Barrel length, again, being a commander, is 4.25 inches. The width, including the thumb safety, okay, because that definitely juts out, right? 1.45 inches. The weight, being an aluminum frame, a lighter gun. Uh, 30.5 ounces, so that's nice. You're definitely saving some weight as compared to like a combat commander or an all steel frame commander. Um, so again, for carry, just general use, whatever it's going to be, um, you are saving some weight with the aluminum frame. However, you're not really losing any durability, and we'll get to that later. Um, MSRP on this, uh, per Dan Wesson's website, is $12.98. I paid, I definitely paid less than that for this gun. However, even if like the going rate was $1,300 for this gun, I do believe that it is well worth it. Dan Wesson in and of themselves, um, for the money, for the money, I do believe creates the best 1911. Every single piece and part it is precision machined, CNC machined and milled. Um, with the highest quality components, they are hand fit, you know, like um, safety, slide stop, beaver tail grip safety, all that different stuff. All the, all the key components are hand fit. So it means somebody actually sits there and fits these pieces to the gun to have the proper, best, utmost, highest quality as far as the fitment goes. Uh, and that's something that you don't get in a standard 1911. Unless you're talking about higher quality 1911s, when you're talking Dan Wesson, Les Bear, Ed Brown, Wilson Combat, Nighthawk Custom, stuff like that, um, you're not going to get that with a Colt, especially a modern one. You're not going to get that with a Smith & Wesson. You're not going to get that with a SIG. You're not going to get that with a Socialist Armory. These are all um, production guns, and, and, and the Dan Wesson, in my opinion, is a step above a production gun. You know, you'll talk to some people, they'll say, hey, you know, Dan Wesson, they're the best production gun. They're the highest quality production gun. But in my opinion, being a 1911 guy, and this isn't just biased because I own them, um, I do truly believe that Dan Wesson, you know, it, they take it a step above and beyond because it's not necessarily a production gun. Because being a gun with hand-fit components, you might not necessarily be able to take this safety off this gun and fit it to the next Dan Wesson Vigil Commander. Same thing with the slide stop, the beaver tail, you know, whatever it is. Like They're all individual and unique guns per the person that was putting them together, uh, building them, and hand-fitting them. So they use the highest quality materials, highest quality CNC machining, and then, you know, when they're assembling them, they hand-fit them, which would typically mean that the parts are oversized and they need to be filed down and molded and shaped to fit perfectly to the tightest tolerances that you can't necessarily get with a machine, which is kind of funny. You know, you can get it out of a human if they know what they're doing, and uh, you know making it happen but you can't necessarily get it out of a machine on a production level so that's where they go a step above and beyond and that's why I really really love Dan Wesson guns 
Um, very, very high quality. Also, if you don't know, Dan Wesson is the Wesson part of Smith & Wesson. Back in the day, they were in cahoots. Then Dan Wesson split off and started doing his own thing. And, uh, you know, since then, the rest is history. However, um, we're talking about here and now and uh, excellent guns. Absolutely excellent guns. So, all that being said, getting out of the way, let's give you a look-see, as it were, over this gun and uh, all the little minute details. If you look, all the, I don't know how, how well that's coming across on video, but all the edges are beveled. There's no sharp edges on the gun. Everything is everything is smooth and rounded off, but but still defined, if that makes any sense. Okay. Again, commander, so four and a quarter inch. Look at that muzzle. Look at how well fit that is and perfectly seamless as it is. And look at the recessed crown, the flush cut muzzle with the recessed crown. Not only does that look good and uh, functional, because if you drop it, you're not going to damage your crown. You're not going to lose accuracy, stuff like that. It's, it's just sexy. I mean, look at how mean that looks, all right? So there's that. Um, again, the duty finish, extremely wear resistant, corrosive resistant, uh, just looks good. Uh, as far as the sights go, they are branded Dan Wesson. This is a serrated, very nicely serrated, hopefully that's coming across on camera, very nicely serrated, blacked out rear, which is what I prefer because when you're shooting a pistol, you're supposed to focus on the front sight, right? So having anything back here on the rear sight is distracting and it doesn't allow you to have complete and total positive focus on the front sight, which in this case being a Trigicon insert in the front sight. So we got the white outline. It is a night sight. It will glow. Uh, Trigicon does have the highest, well actually this is a Meriglow. Look at that. I thought it was Trigicon. My other Dan Wesson has uh, Trig a Tridge front sight with the same setup. So that's actually a Meriglow. So either way, both high quality companies. I tend to prefer Trigicon. I don't know if it's just the stigma, but all of my Trigicon uh, sighting options that I own have been nothing but the best of quality. So either way, same thing with the Meriglow, but either way, rear sight. Again, here is the, the sight picture. Let's see if we could line that up for you. It's not going to focus. Um, let's see if we could... Yeah, but blacked out rear, um, serrated, and then front night sight. Uh, awesome, especially for a carry gun. It's impossible to miss a line. It's very accurate. I love the, the profile of the sights, and I love how it's got just enough air in between as far as the front sight goes to pick it up relatively easily, but it's still not super wide to where you're going to lose some, some practical accuracy. Um, Everything is fitted perfectly on the gun itself. Thumb safety, very positive, very affirmative. On and off, it, it, it's, it's tight and it's right, baby, let me tell you. It's also serrated, very positive, you know, grip and feel. When you're shooting a 1911, traditionally, you want to, you know, you want to shoot a thumbs forward grip. That's how I shoot any pistol other than a revolver. And uh, you take your, your firing hand and rest it on the the little ledge, the shelf, that the thumb safety provides you. And being wide, wide enough, but not too wide, and extremely positive, uh, snicking on and off, that definitely gives you an excellent shelf um, to not only manage recoil, but to have muscle memory and do what you got to do with that gun. So I really, really do like that. Speaking of fitment... Let's take a look at the slide to frame fit. I know the lighting is not the best per usual, but look at how how smooth and uh, silky and perfectly machined that is. I assume this is one of the parts that's fit by hand as far as Dan Wesson goes, the slide to frame fit. That's a very integral, very important part of a 1911. And uh, let's drop the mag. There you go. Very positive release on the mag extended magazine release button that uh, is also checkered for grip and, and positive actuation but just just listen to the gun I know that was probably awkward for some of you out there but I mean it buttery smooth 
glass on glass smooth absolutely zero play whatsoever in the entire gun there's no play locks up perfectly and uh it's 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 smooth as silk as far as the fitment goes and again this is an aluminum frame not a steel frame so so usually it's a little bit harder uh to do that from what i understand obviously aluminum being weaker than steel softer than steel um you got to be a little bit more delicate when working with it as far as the machining process goes um, going down there beaver tail grip safety let's look at the fit and or the finish extremely positive doesn't rattle nothing on this gun rattles or shakes there's nothing loose everything is tight and right like i said um, going down to the grip we have checkering on the mainspring housing okay i'm not exactly sure the lines per inch uh, it is machine done we also have checkering on the front strap okay that's a nice thing i i could live with or without the checkering on on the front strap on a 1911 uh it really doesn't bother me either way however it does definitely provide extra grip on on the gun which is always an added benefit especially when you're talking about a defensive or fighting pistol so that's nice to have also being a smaller gun the four and a quarter inch the commander a lot of people might buy this for a carry gun so it does have a slight little bobtail on the grip you know it, it's just enough i'm not the biggest fan of a bobtail i don't necessarily like the way that they look or feel on the gun um however it's just got the little slightest bit to help cut down on printing and and, and increase your carryability um as it were so that being said also we have a slight bit of a flared magwell on the gun uh, you might not be able to see it the best per the lighting but it, it is beveled on the inside of the magwell and flared a little bit so you know the aid to aid in inserting a magazine that's always a good idea and uh, i like that take a look at the opposite side okay you can see what that barrel says right there that's match that's a match grade barrel everything on these dan wessons are match grade uh lowered and flared ejection port aid and reliability all that good stuff and the trigger we have a skeletonized trigger skeletonized hammer and uh the trigger man the trigger we got a little bit of take up just like on any typical 1911 trigger for the most part little tiny bit of take up and then let's look at this break oh geez that is good that is good let's do it again a little bit of take up maybe eighth of an inch maybe a little bit less and then a little bit of pressure man that's if that's over four pounds which i really don't think it is it's probably less three point something three point seven three point eight i mean it, it's an amazing trigger and and that's one of the the best benefits of a 1911 is that straight back trigger press um the design of the trigger in and of itself the feel of the trigger it, it helps in the practical accuracy of the firearm the fitment and build quality and the components and all that helps with you know the the accuracy of the gun but as far as how well somebody could shoot it having a really really stellar trigger on the gun helps out a lot and uh you know with this thing I mean, you feel like you can shoot the dick off a gnat at 100 yards. Excellent trigger. Let's check the reset. Here's the reset. Right there. Affirmative, positive, audible, tactile. Pushes your finger back out, and then you're right back at the wall for another crisp, clean break with very, very minimal over travel. I cannot say enough good about this gun. I shot this gun. I put probably three, 400 rounds through it so far zero malfunctions um that's what i've come to expect from a dan wesson extremely accurate and for a lightweight gun for a commander size gun especially one that's made out of aluminum and not all steel as far as the frame goes um it really really does not kick that much it's very controllable it's extremely accurate i really didn't notice any denigration or degradation i should say denigration i don't even know if that's a word i'll have to look that up <laughs> but i really didn't notice any degradation of accuracy or controllability while shooting it is lighter um the barrel is shorter so you're not going to get as good of a powder burn out of a four inch as you would a five inch 
Uh, plus the five inches heavier, it's going to manage the recoil a little bit better, soak up the recoil a little bit better. So technically, yes, this does kick more. It might not have the best, you know, as good of velocity with certain rounds as a five inch would. It might not be as accurate as a five inch would be, but practically speeding, speaking, um, I really couldn't tell that much of a difference. 10 yards holding groups like that no problem and really not even trying like the gun runs itself there the, dan west makes an excellent gun excellent gun um so i mean overall just just completely impressed honestly i really really am and uh just the feel the fit the finish the high quality components you cannot beat speaking of that we we touched on the aluminum frame right traditionally with an aluminum frame gun in a 1911 if it does not have a fully ramped barrel um, you could you know incur some damage to the frame over time so you've got the magazine right again really positive ejection no problems there high quality magazines too have yet to have a single issue with any magazine um, with Dan Wesson's name on it I don't know if they're making it I don't know who's making it for them uh, it is branded Dan Wesson, but zero malfunctions whatsoever. Anti-tilt followers, quality stuff. Um, but, you know, all right, so the bullets are in there, right? Um, and then you put the mag in. If you don't have a fully ramped barrel, over time, the rounds feeding out of the magazine are going to hit the frame while they're jumping into the throat of the barrel to rest in the chamber, and they're going to ding the aluminum frame. Aluminum not being as strong as steel will wear quicker, more easily, different things like that. So what Dan Wesson has done to fix that, if you can see in there, which you can, I believe you can. Let me get the mag out, maybe get a little bit better lighting in there. That is a fully, fully ramped barrel. So the barrel itself actually, you know, it's a standard barrel. And then um, from the throat of the barrel coming down is, is in a, a complete and total ramp. Okay, that is covering and guarding that aluminum frame. So the bullet is only ever contacting steel. It's, it's hitting the ramp and going up into the chamber. And it's steel on steel just as it were or as it would be with a full steel gun. So you're really, you're gaining the light weight of the alloy frame but you're technically not losing any stability or structural integrity or anything like that because the bullet is contacting steel on steel you know well not the bullets not steel but you know what I'm saying um, which is a very very good thing plus it's a very highly polished ramp it's extremely high quality everything about it let's see if we can get more light in there I wish I gotta bring a light with me when I'm doing this stuff help you guys out and see that but you could see it it's gleaming in there and uh, that's all steel that's all high quality steel of the barrel also note the gi style guide rod i am not a fan in the least bit of full length guide rods they're obnoxious and they make the gun more difficult to take apart um, plus they're not traditional so overall honestly 10 out of 10 with this dan west vigil commander um 100%. Everything about the gun is perfect, in my opinion. Now, obviously, realistically, nothing is ever perfect. Um, but I honestly can't find anything to, to knock this gun for. I've had nothing but success with it. I've had nothing but reliability, nothing but accuracy, nothing but positive, you know, shooting experience with the gun. I completely love the entire setup of the gun as far as just an overall 1911 in a commander style and as well as a carry gun. You've got the check ring, you've got nice grips, uh, nice set of sights, accurate, reliable. I mean, what else could you, could you ask for? And plus, it is made with the highest quality materials, um, with the highest quality machining and fitment processes. So at the end of the day, if you need a good 1911, guys, buy Dan Wesson. They've got an excellent selection. Um, I love them. Like I said, I got a couple of them. Probably going to end up with a couple more. Um, but I'm, I'm gunning for that Nighthawk, baby. Maybe that Wilson. Maybe maybe a Cabot, you know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm probably going to get a Wilson. Um, but for the money, for about half the price, 
sometimes even a third of the price of a Wilson or a Nighthawk or, or different guns like that. You can get a Dan Wesson, and, and practically speaking, for the average shooter, this is just as good, if not better, in the case that you're saving all that money. You could get a couple of these, or you can get this, and a rifle, or a shotgun, or, or gear, and ammo, and, and different stuff. I mean, Dan Wesson, in my opinion, hands down, is the best 1911 manufacturer on the market as far as quality and price right now. Maybe somebody will come scoop up that position uh, you know, sometime in the future, but as far as an in-between a full custom and a production gun, in my opinion, Dan Wesson is the only option. That's the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Uh, like, share, comment, subscribe. Check the links in the description box below. Comment down below and let me know what you think. Let me know your experiences with Dan Wesson's or 1911's in general. And uh, definitely stay tuned for what's next. We'll catch you later, guys. Peace.